Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to day two. My name's Michael McAndrew, and I'm the community manager for CVCRM. Uh, I live in the south of Spain, in a, in a place that a lot of people might call the middle of nowhere. But I have a good internet connection, a fairly good internet connection. Um, and it means I can Skype, I can email, I can write blog posts, sometimes I even do a bit of coding, just a little bit. But kind of doing everything on the internet isn't quite enough, and I always really look forward to coming to Civicon twice a year and meeting people, finding out about uh, all the cool ways that people are using CiviCRM, uh, finding out about new features, meeting old people, and just getting inspired by uh, the community and how everyone works together. Um, I want to thank Stormy for her keynote yesterday. Uh, that gave us lots to think about. And also, I want to say thank you to all of everyone who presented yesterday and everyone who's going to present today. If you missed any of those sessions, uh, you can catch up with them online after the conference. So before I get started on the kind of the, the main presentation, I want to say thanks to two groups of people uh, without whom this conference wouldn't be possible. And the first group is our volunteers. Um, yeah. So the conference is pretty much entirely run by volunteers. And this year, we've really had really have had a really great um, group of volunteers who've helped with sessions, marketing, and sponsorship. Um, if ever, if those, if any, anyone who volunteered wants to stand up, you kind of jump the gun a bit, but what I want to do is give them a, a round of applause. <laughs> and uh, uh, one person that I want to single out is Nicholas Ganabit, who. He took on the, the, the lead role for this conference, and that's a pretty big undertaking. Um, and he really has done a fantastic job. He's really carried that out really nicely, so thank you. Uh, the other group of people who we wouldn't be able to put this conference on without is our sponsors. And we've had a really uh, a bumper crop of sponsors this year. So uh, I'd like to thank our gold sponsors, WordPress, Square, Web Access, CiviDesk, Ginkgo Street Labs, IATS Payments, Progressive Technology Project, Back Office Thinking, and uh, JMA Consulting. Also, want to thank our silver sponsors and our bronze sponsors. OK, what I want to do in this talk is give some visibility to things that we see happening in our community that we think are uh, positive for the future of the project. And there's kind of three different things I want to, three different kind of things I want to look at. I want to look at how end users are developing features um, that meet their needs. I want to have a look at some of the latest statistics for the project. And I also want to have a look at how people are raising money for the project. And on, we're going to have a look at the recent example of the Civi Volunteer 2.0 fundraising campaign. Um, and then after that, I'll talk a bit about what the core team is up to, um, what, our, what our plans are for the future as well. OK, so one of the, one of the positive trends we've noticed recent, in the, let's say in the last couple of years, is more and more end users finding ways to get the features that they need uh, into Civi CRM. And uh, the first example I want to talk about is um, Civi Rules, a project that's been run by MAF Norway and Civi Co-op. And Civi, Civi Co-op and MAF Norway both wore their uniforms to CiviCon in London. This is a picture from CiviCon in London. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them there? If you can't, that's them. <laughs> Just, yeah. um, so MAF are a, a fundraising organization. And they're interested in uh, automating donor journeys in Civi CRM. So kind of like Stormy was talking about yesterday, it's important to thank donors. So let's, maybe you want to thank, 24 hours after they've donated, maybe you want to send them a, an SMS or a, an email, depending on their communication preferences. Or maybe, um, 
maybe 12 months after they've donated, you want to say, uh, send them a, an ask saying, thanks for your donation, this is what we've done with it, and we'd like to, you to increase your donation this year. So to solve that problem, they've created, they've, uh, created the Civi Rules extension, or they're creating it at the moment. And the idea, really, Civi Rules is a kind of a general framework that says, when, a, when something happens under certain conditions, I want to carry out another action. So it's kind of like a workflow engine. And I don't know if, how many of you been have been following this development or are aware of it, but I think they've kind of set a really good example in how they're doing this development. So I want to have a look at some of those principles. So the first thing is um, that all of their work that they've done has been in the open right from the start. Um, they've had a look on over the blog, and they've written seven blog posts since they started doing this, each talking about what they're planning on doing, updating people on their reports, and on how they've, how they've gone. And if you look at those blog posts, you'll see people have commented on them, and people have provided good comments. And if you, look at, if you have a look, follow that development, all of that feedback's gone back into the, um, into the development. <coughs> they've also presented on their work at conferences, um, and they've made, and importantly, all of their source code has been out in the open uh, from day one. You know, so, if, so if other people want to get involved, have a look at what they're doing, um, they can just go to the go, go and have a look at the source code, download it, try it out, and install it. Um, and they've also done actually a great job on documenting that as well. The other thing they've done is they've organized sprints, um, and they've invited people to uh, attend those sprints. So they had a kind of a sprint in London where um, Amnesty International F Flanders came along and Leukemia and Lymphoma Research and kind of inputted into the process. So it kind of shows that that being open really pays off in terms of getting involvement. The other thing they did was um, they're doing everything one step at a time. The, the very first version of, um, uh, or the very first bit of work they did on this was a, um, a little extension that they completed in a week. It was a kind of a bit rough around the edges. It didn't do very much, just did a few specific things, but it worked really nicely and it, kind of, and it convinced them that this was a good route to follow and it convinced people to kind of the, the people that they were working for, that it was, it was worthwhile doing and, you know, that they continue, could continue funding the project. The other thing they're doing, and this is kind of really similar to the, the picture that Stormy put up yesterday, just a different version. <laughs> right. Uh, they're scratching their own itch. Um, but what I, and I guess what I mean, so in this particular example, you know, if you, if you say we're going to do something, it's, we're going to do this project, it's likely you'll find lots of people saying, Oh, well, that sounds really great. We'd like it to do this, this, and this. Or have you thought about doing these different things? Um, and it's great to keep all of that stuff in mind, but it's also important to just stick on, start at least with the stuff that matters to you. There's this other people that do illustrations for safety, uh, you know, guides in planes. I think are really good. And uh, this one is, you know, put on your own oxygen mask before helping others. And that's what that's what they've done. So in doing, in doing all of that, they're also um, they're keeping, they're keeping their eye on the big picture. So this, they're, kind of, they're thinking about what they want to do, but they're doing it in a way that can be extended in, in future by others. And that's a, that's a great way to, kind of, you know, to get more participation. So to me, that's a really nice example of uh, how you can carry out development within our community. It's only one example. It's not the only way of doing it, but it's, you know, it's, it's a good way of doing it. Um, so another, another good example is uh, the, the National Democratic Institute. They've been working uh, with Civi CRM for a while now, and th just recently they funded some improvements to Civi Case um, to allow you to configure ca Civi case, different case types through the user interface, make it much easier than it was previously. So Civi Case has been around since 2009, um, but it's been a bit of a technical task to get it to install it, get it set up. Now it's a lot easier, and we've, um, they, you know, these guys, they saw that that would be that would work really well for their projects. They have, oh, they have um, the Civi MP and Civi Party projects that they um, that they use to encourage uh, or to help people that are uh, political representatives ar around the world, and they thought that um, that you know that a Civi you, developing that Civi case user interface would be really useful for them. They did it in a way. That allowed other. It's now in court. You know, it's now in court, and other uh, organisations can also benefit from it. And we've seen a lot of increase in the amount of people who are using Civicase, and we think that's really that's a really positive sign as well. 
Just another quick example is uh, the, the Great Lakes Planetarium Association. So they've been using SIPI CRM since 2011. They started off using it for, for membership. They have a fairly complex conference that they run. Um, and they, they, had some, they wanted to do some things in CIVI, with SIVI event that weren't possible. They wanted to do partial payments and they wanted people to edit their event registrations uh, after they'd done the initial registration. So again, they were able, you know, they had, they had some funds, they had uh, $12,000 that they were able to contribute to this um, and they got that developed and put into core for 4.5 and now, you know, that those features are available for everyone. So they're just some simple ways and, you know, that's just to kind of give you an idea of how end users are contributing and how you could contribute. So the next thing I want to have a look at is some st statistics that we've uh, recently made available. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through all of these, but I do want to highlight um, a couple of statistics. And one is that we are, uh, like you've seen probably around the conference, different people have talked about it, we're approaching nearly 10,000 uh, end users, it's different active installations, people using CIVI CRM. And we think that's a really big and positive milestone for the project. Um, those users have over 150 million contacts in and they've processed 80 million separate donations and nearly 50 million event registrations and I, in and in fact actually these are these are and these are a um, these are these figures are less than the, in the reality we know that a lot of our use well a significant um, a proportion of our users turn off the ping pingbacks which um, pr report these statistics so we're probably over 10,000 already but we're not going to celebrate until we hit, you know, we hit the 10,000, according to these statistics. You'd also see here, we've got a kind of a nice spread in terms of the, the size of our different sites. You can see Drupal's our most popular um, CMS, and WordPress and Joomla are still kind of fighting it out for second place. Um, and you can see most people are on CIVI CRM 4.5 or 4.6. We still have a few people on the kind of earlier versions, even some still on 4.1, some of whom maybe in this room today. <laughs> but we're not going to ask you to stand up. And, and. OK. So here, here we go. Is, uh, this this um, slide just shows our geographical statistics as well. We also have a whole, a whole range of other statistics as well that I'm not showing you today. And just as interesting as this, these statistics is the way they've been put together. And um, I want to I have a look at that. Actually, before I do, I just want to say, just talk about why these statistics are important. You know, they give us a lot of visibility and credibility in the marketplace, and they kind of they're they're really good for attracting other um, for attracting users, new users, and service providers. And they also allow us to track the health of our project to see how we're doing. Are we are we on the right track? So, talking about how they've been put together, um, we've been we've been collecting these statistics anonymously from our install base for a few years now. But we haven't had, for whatever reason, we haven't had the, t the time to sit down and present them in a nice format. And uh, Nicholas Ganovit from CiviDesk, uh, he decided he was going to sit down and put these together and put these together and put them in a in a format where we could, you know, where we could use them and benefit from them. And so I want to talk about some of the. Um, so I, we think he did that in a pretty pretty smart way, and I want to show talk about um, how he did that. So the first thing is that all of the source code that generates these statistics is out in the open. So if anyone wants to say, well, you know, how, how do we know that you're telling the truth about these statistics? They can go and see exactly how, how they're collected and, and how we interpret them. Um, the other thing that uh, Nicholas did was he, he's, he put in place a framework. So he, he, put, he did all the groundwork for collecting these statistics and then added um, a few, ex a few added the statistics that you can see. But he's also made it really easy for other people to add extra statistics. So maybe, let's say, we want to have a look at how many people are on our, um, our forum or how many people are t tweeting about CIVI CRM sites. That's really, that would be really easy for you to do. And if, pe if people are interested in contribute, contributing that, Nicholas is really happy, I think, to, uh, to get you started with that. Other th the other thing that's really good about these stats is we can use them in different places. Um, we've, I mean, we've used them all around this conference. We're going to put them on our website. We, we have a new website design coming up, and these stats are going to be on the home, you know, on the straight directly on the homepage of the website. And we think that's going to um, be really good for the project. So, a couple, a couple of things we'd like to do next with the stats: we'd like to add uh, 
we'd like to add more sources, as I mentioned, and we'd also like to um, have add kind of a historical element. It's all right. It's interesting to see, you know, t that we've got ten thousand sites, but probably what's more interesting is what direction is that going? Is that going up, or is it going down? Right. Well, it's going up. Uh, just so you know, but we want to. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're really keen to, to be able to produce graphs um, that show that. And that's pretty easy to do as well, right, Nicholas? We just need, we just need to, uh, if, you know, if people want to help out with that, um, that's great. Otherwise, we're gonna, we'll probably do that at the sprint. So if any of you are coming to the sprint and want to help with that, that would be great. Okay, so the, the third thing I want to have a look at is, uh, is fundraising. And I don't, who, who here is aware of CIBI Volunteer 2.0 in the, in the fundraising campaign that was recently happened. So I'd say that's, that's most most of you, I would say, which is pretty, which is good. So just to give you a, a quick background, uh, the first version of Civi Volunteer was written uh, by Frank Gomez and Michael Darabegi with help from uh, who, who were at Ginkgo Street Labs with help from Tim Otten and Coleman Watts from the core team. That was uh, released in 2012. And um, since it was released, it's kind of risen to become our, our second the second most popular extension on our extensions directory. The, f the first one is Civi Discount. Um, but you know, being in, having being really popular and being used by a lot of sites, kind of thoughts turn to like, what are we going to do for the next version? Um, what should be in the next version, and how are we going to fund it? Um, so Ginkgo put together a, a kind of a spec for that that second version, and sta and Roshni started a uh, a crowd a crowd fund crowdfunding campaign to get that started with help from Josh, our fundraiser. Um, so they were they were lucky enough early on in that campaign to get a, a fifteen thousand dollar matching grant. Um, so that, you know the idea is that if if they can raise fifteen thousand dollars from the community, um, the fund is going to give them an extra fifteen thousand dollars to fund that. Um, and we were we were successful in, uh, or they were successful in, uh, in meeting that goal. It kind of got down to the last day, but they, it was pretty close. But they they got there. They got they raised the fifteen um, thousand dollars from thirty eight different uh, donors. And, uh, and one organisation that I want to uh, just mention is the Friends of St. Ge Friends of Georgia State Park, who were early adopters of Civi Volunteer and, and made significant contributions to both campaigns. So a couple of reasons why this stands out. For me, as a as a fundraising campaign, I guess the first the first is that it was initiated um, outside of core. It was initiated by Ginkgo Street Labs. We the core team helped them execute it, but the kind of the the initial um, uh, push came from Ginkgo. And it was also it was also interesting to see where the, the fundraising came from. Uh, as you might expect, a lot of end users that were that were using it were interested in developing new functionality. But we also had um, some of our service providers uh, contribute. Uh, they con contributed a significant amount to the campaign as well. And that might sound, you know, maybe t in some ways that might sound counterintuitive. Like, why, why would a, an organization uh, give, who's provides CV time services give money to another organization who's potentially a competitor to write some software? But, like, I think that kind of points to how open source development is different. And this, this is a quote from uh, Parvez. Uh, who works at Vader Consulting on why he, why he gave. He says, I guess we have to ask ourselves why we're in the open source game and what's going to maximize our contribution. And it really, it kind of, it makes sense really for, and it may, and this is a kind of quote that was on our, that um, Parvez, this is an email that Parvez wrote to our partner list. And there was a ton of other similar emails on that partner list from partners saying, well, you know, maybe I don't have people that are using Civi Volunteer right now, but um, I've had inquiries in the past, and I know that maybe I'll get I'll get those in the future, and it would be really great for us to have that functionality in Civi CRM. So it makes sense for for me to contribute. So uh, a few points that I learned from talking uh, to Michael and Roshni about the, the about the fundraising campaign that I think are are useful for people that are uh, raising money for Civi CRM. And the first is kind of lots of prep. It's kind of obvious. You need to do a lot of preparation. You need to kind of say clearly why, why you're going to, why you're raising the money, what you're going to use it for. The second is peer messaging, and, and uh, what uh, Ginkgo did was they got a lot of um, quotes from people who were, who were using the system already, who were who were contributing to the second uh, version, about why they were using it, 
um, and and why why they wanted to contribute to the you know to the why they wanted these new features. And they were powerful messages in in getting other people um, on board in the campaign. You know, having messages from your peers telling telling you why why they're doing things is is a powerful is a powerful thing. They it was they also needed to do a lot of fund a lot of a lot of follow up with people who were do, who were donating and you know they spent a, a a significant amount of time talking to people who 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 expressed an interest in donating and getting them to commit to the project. And the other thing they did was they um, it helped them forge a lot of links with partners you know and uh, and I think that's an, uh, that's another interesting point. Uh, they were able to they talked to other partners. Um, they're now, you know, they're now, they worked I think, with Tadpole um, in working with a client, I think. Who there? <laughs> okay. But <laughs> anyhow, it really, it really um, has helped them work, you know, like develop relationships with other partners. Okay, so a couple of other things I want to talk, I want to talk about. Um, first is the, the Google Summer of Code. I don't know who's, in, who's aware of this project. Um, or who kind of knows much about it. So not as many people. So, so the idea of the Google Summer of Code is it's, it's a way for uh, computer science students um, in their summer holidays, in their vacation, to, uh, to work on projects, open source projects, and get, experience, get real world experience. And it's a way for open source projects to benefit from those computer science students, from the work they do. And we first participated in uh, GSOC, the Google Summer of Code, in 2014. And the, I, we submitted a lot of project proposals to them, and, and we got six places. So we had six different projects that were completed. Um, and that, uh, that was a real benefit for the, the project and the community. We applied again this year in 2015, um, and Google have given us 11 places. And that's really, uh, that's, you know, we think that's great. It kind of validates, we get that validation from Google that we're, kind of, we're headed in a, uh, a good direction, and they're interested in supporting our project. Um, the other thing I just want to talk about, and Coleman talked about this yesterday, so I won't go into it uh, too much, but we have a new Stack Exchange site, and uh, Stack Exchange is basically, it's a, w it's a way for you to ask questions and get those questions answered. Um, it's, a really, it's a really cool resource, and I encourage you to check it out. And uh, currently, here's the leaderboard, apparently Col well, Coleman is in first place, and I'm sure he'll be really happy uh, to, get, to get knocked off that first place, if anyone wants to do that for him. <laughs> okay, so I just want to talk finally about some of the stuff that the core team does. So the core team is for is eight full time paid employees, and I was talking to someone the other day. They said, "Oh, I, I didn't realize there was a a paid core team. You know, I didn't realize they existed." And I think there's a lot of people who who aren't aware of that. You know, like the kind of the story that we often tell about open source is. Well, open source, anyone can contribute, and all of those contributions find their way into the kind of the product, and it's, a, it's kind of a community effort. But actually, there is a fair amount of work that's involved, um, if you like, at the center of that, coordinating all those contributions and, kind of, and providing leadership uh, for the project. And that's what, uh, that's what we do. We don't really talk, we're kind of a modest bunch, you know, so we don't really talk about it that much, but um, uh, that's, that's what we do. And this is kind of, this is, the, you know, this, this is kind of too much information for a slide, um, but <laughs> that's what we do. So some of the stuff that we are uh, interest, interest, w we're interested in working on over the next uh, 12 months or so. We're making CiviCRM more responsive. And if you've seen, um, if you've had a look at CiviMail, if you've had a look at CiviMail in 4.6, you'll see that that's kind of, it's easier to move, uh, it's easier to move around that, it's faster to work with. It does nice things like auto saves your content, so, you don't you don't lose content if um, your browser crashes, and um, we're going to we're going to be working over the next um, uh, year or so to kind of put those kind of user improvements, user interface improvements, into the rest of Civi CRM. The other thing that we're uh, focusing on, and we're doing more and more of, is um, is stewarding community contributions. So as as more and more people start uh, s contributing to the project. More and more of our time is, is, uh, is taken up in hel helping those people get started, uh, kind of reviewing their contributions, suggesting different ways in which they could um, work. So although we're still, still continuing to do a lot of development, that this is kind of taking up a lot of our time, or more and more of our time. 
Okay. So kind of so bringing it all together, what I've tried to do is give different examples of how uh, people are contributing to the success of CBCRM and ways in which people are um, they're solving their own problems, but doing so in a way that moves the whole project forward. And that's really that's kind of when you think about it, that's the reason why CBCRM exists. The idea is that we don't just it's not just one person working on one project. We kind of collaborate and work together to maximise the effect, maximise the impact that we can have. And it is really amazing to see each year how that gets um, uh, bigger and bigger. And I really encourage you guys to, or you folks, to be um, a part of that as we go forward over the next few years. Cool.